everyone. We will get started. According to my watch, it's 10.30, so uh, this time I'd like to call the Metro Sports Authority Board of Directors meeting to order. We are pleased to be back at Nissan Stadium, and we want to thank the Titans for hosting us and having us this morning. As you know, the authority elected its 2018 officers at our last meeting. Officers make up the executive committee and the personnel committee. And committee and liaison appointments have also been made. This year's finance committee will be chaired by Lisa Howe. Congratulations, Lisa. Thank you for serving. And uh, the board will continue to, um, committee will also have Dudley West and Margaret Bim serving on the finance committee. I know uh, our board generally all participates um, in those meetings, um, even if you're not on it, and we hope everyone can still continue to do that. So thank you guys for serving. Um, our facility liaisons this year will be for Nissan Stadium, Chuck Merriweather. Chuck c can't be here today because of spring training, but um, he has agreed to serve in that capacity. And Bridgestone Arena will be Bob Obrada. And first Tennessee Park liaison will be Rip Raman. So thank you, guys. The appeals process for any action from um, today's board meeting can be found at the top of today's agenda. And we will move along into our review of our meeting minutes from our last meeting. They were sent out to everyone last month, and at this time we will entertain any um, revisions or corrections if, if anyone's noted them. Otherwise, uh, we'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes. Move approval. Second. second. The motion is second. All in favor to approve the minutes, say aye. 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 The minutes are approved. Moving along, we have our executive director's report by our own Monica Ferguson. Monica. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Thank you for being here today. Um, as usual, we have a lot of ground to cover. You have the agenda before you. Um, Rich Riebling, Larry Adama, and Mary Kavara are here, and they will be giving us an MLS um, stadium report. Um, Rich and the Titans have some time constraints, so what I'd like to do, if it pleases the board, is go ahead and have, um, let's hear from both of them, and then once they are finished, then I'll continue with my report. Okay. Sounds great. Well, we will move on to our next agenda item and then come back to uh, finish up the report. Um, so moving along at this time, we will have our MLS stadium report. And, uh, I believe Mary Kavara is here, as well as Rich Riebling, our uh, Metro COO, to give that report. This <laughs> <laughs> man in his orange <laughs> outfit back here is, is blinding me. He's kind of uh, keeping me from uh, concentrating. Good morning. How is everybody? Um, Everybody good today? Yeah. Ryman, I owe you a phone call, by the way. I, uh, <laughs> I always thought the best thing to do is to go on the offensive, right, rather than to... <laughs> I called you this morning about 10 o'clock. You weren't there. No, I have not called you back. I owe you a phone call. Good morning. I hope everybody's doing well today. I um, wanted to just talk for a few minutes, uh, give you a, a broad overview of kind of where we are with soccer. Uh, I think the first thing that, that some of you may have uh, may have questions about is obviously with the, the change in the administration with Mayor Briley now assuming office, you know, sort of are we still, everybody still on board on the same page? And the answer is yes. Uh, I think Mayor Briley has made it clear to me and others, uh, including maybe meeting with Mr. Ingram and Mary Kavara earlier this week that he is, you know, uh, he was supportive of it when he was the vice mayor and nothing has changed. He's remained supportive of our efforts to, uh, to complete everything that needs to be done to, uh, to, to build the soccer facility at the fairgrounds. Um, and so um, sort of kind of, kind of lay out for, I thought what, when I, in talking with, uh, with, uh, with, with Monica and Kim last week or two weeks ago, I wanted to sort of give you a little update on kind of just what's going to be happening and then kind of 
when you need to be prepared to, uh, to start reading documents and, and lease agreements and things like that, which is a little bit off yet, but uh, we thought we'd rather do it now. So, so far, uh, obviously, the only thing that's really happened uh, is obviously lots of meetings on planning and sort of laying out the stadium, where it's going to fit on the site. So I think Monica has been in some of those meetings um, with, with Commonwealth and, and, and the ICON team, which represents the, uh, the, the MLS franchise. So that's sort of uh, ongoing. Uh, the, the first substantive piece that to, to make this all happen uh, is the architectural and engineering contract. Uh, and Metro Purchasing has now has got that out in procurement right now. Um, I don't, Larry, but when are proposals due? You know? A week or two. So proposals from the architectural and engineering committee are due in a week or two. Uh, an evaluation committee will be appointed uh, to review the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the proposals. Um, it's uh, my belief, I'm not sure if this has been finalized yet, but I believe Monica will serve as a representative on that committee. Uh, so, so we have a sports authority representative on that selection committee, as well as someone from the fair board and then uh, someone from the uh, MLS team as well. So that would be sort of a three-party agreement with both uh, the ICON uh, team that is working with the MLS franchise and Commonwealth, who's representing the city's interest, will sort of be serve as staff advisories to that committee uh, as they make their recommendations. So the idea would be that we would have the architectural and, and engineering team selected by <laughs> Uh, you know, sometime in the next uh, 30 to 60 days, probably, in terms of get a contract done. And that's sort of the first piece. Uh, sort of as that's proceeding, uh, and, and there's no, at this point, no, no actions needed by the authority, I don't think, on that. I think it's a metro contract, so it's kind of going through with normal procurement kind of issues. The second piece of this would be the construction manager contract, um, which obviously is a critical piece of the whole team, is who's going to build the facility. Uh, that RFP is in design, is in process right now. It has not been completed. Uh, I think the goal is to try to get that published in the next uh, two to three weeks. Uh, and so it'll follow a month or so behind uh, the selection of the architect. But the idea being by sort of the end of spring, early summer, you'd have those two major pieces, major elements of the whole project uh, would be in place. Um, uh, we've, we've, uh, we, uh, we, we obviously have... Uh, and so that's sort of the, the pr professionals that have to be brought on, on board. Um, the, uh, the, the lawyers, uh, uh, I know Metro Legal, Metro Legal has retained a, an independent firm, a third party firm to kind of give it advice, a firm that's done a lot of sports work in the past. So they've got, uh, they're working on draft documents uh, to, to share with the team in terms of the lease agreement and the development agreement. Uh, it would be my thought that that would not come before the Sports Authority or the Fair Board or anybody else for approval so until sometime in the, in the late spring, May, May, June time frame. It would kind of be before that would be finalized and would come to you. Um, I, would, I would say that I have, you have my commitment that we will not give it to you on Monday and ask that you vote on Tuesday. <laughs> I think you would probably appreciate that. Uh, my hope is that we will have, um, you know, a, a several week to a month period uh, at which time you have a chance to really dive into the documents and, and get your questions and, and how you want to have, uh, you know, Chair, you may want to appoint, um, you know, you might have interim meetings or, or, or subcommittee meetings or something in order to go through that uh, before it would come to the, the, the final, to the full authority uh, for action. But that is, um, uh, I would think that action on that would not be needed until uh, sometime uh, in the May-June time frame. Uh, all of this is designed, I should say, to, um, to really have, um, you know, the, the plans are for the stadium to be constructed and open for play in 2021. So it's, it, we have a little bit of time. It's not like we're, uh, uh, we're rushing against the clock. We have a little bit of a window here to do this. So everything is being done. I think, you know, very deliberately and, and, and on, a, on a steady pace, uh, but not a frantic pace, not one that uh, Mary may disagree about the frantic pace of it, but, but not one in which that we're, you know, we're, we're, you know, giving the information on Tuesday and expecting a vote on Wednesday. We should have the ability to, to stretch this out and give everyone a chance to feel um, really comfortable that all their questions are addressed and, 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 and issues identified uh, before we, we really ask for, for, for any votes or any approvals. Um, um, and then uh, finally, you know, so there, if you recall when this was all approved previously, there's some conditions on the approval by the council and others that has to happen. 
And so uh, as, as they work through all those, uh, just for uh, some of the things you might remember are the, that before uh, any buildings at the fairgrounds can be demolished, uh, the council has to, by ordinance, approve the demolition of those buildings uh, with, I think it's 27 votes, if I'm not mistaken, it is 27 votes. So that has to happen yet before anything gets done. And, and um, uh, there's also a rezoning process for, for portions of the property that has to go through its course. So all that uh, will run through the council uh, sometime this summer is my guess. I don't have an exact date yet, but sometime this summer with the goal being to have everything completed that has to be completed um, uh, except for one act, which is your final act, which I'll get to here in the end, uh, would have all that completed, um, you know, September-ish time frame. Um, it, it's, it, takes that, it takes a while to get the zoning process done. That's really the sort of the, 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 the tail that's, uh, that's creating the longest time frame. Uh, and then um, once all that is done, assuming all that gets done, uh, then the last, um, the last act to, before we can actually start commencement of the construction uh, would be uh, the Sports Authority uh, approving the issuance of the bonds. Uh, and I would expect that to be um, sometime in the fourth quarter of this year. Um, I, I, again, I don't, I don't have a more def definite date than that, but I would say sometime between September and December would be when... Um, uh, the bond documents and all the information about the issuance of the debt would come to the sports authority for approval um, with, the, with the, the plans being that um, demolition and construction would start late, nine, late 18, early 19 uh, to, get on, to keep on the schedule for a, um, a sort of a February 2021 uh, a, a, a opening date for the first game. I think the MLS season starts in March, first week in March. So obviously, um, you know, we want to, uh, we would like to have the first home game uh, for the first game of the season. Um, and so that's, um, that kind of broadly, I think, lays out kind of what's going to, you know, kind of what you can anticipate and what's going to be coming down on soccer over the next, over the next couple of months. Monica, anything I left out, you think? Or anything you want me to add that, that I didn't cover? I don't know. Help me out here. I think, I think that covers okay. that. Okay. Larry? Larry? Yeah. Any questions or anything I could help you with? Any, any Advice. I could take some advice, right? I need a lot of advice, right? Uh, it, it, this one's going to be, you know, it, it's going to be. Uh, we got a lot of work to do to get this to get to the point where we're we're able to even present the bonds to the uh, coming to you for approval on the bonds. Um, uh, I would hope that uh, again that we would get the documents to you on the lease agreement, development agreement. You know, if we're asking, for, you mean, what do you usually meet this? Was it the third, third, third. third? So if we're looking for the third Thursday in May for approval, obviously we'd want to get it to you, you know, by the first of, of May or something like that range. But and, I, and it may be that we won't need approval until June. We'll just have to, as we get a little further along and where we are, because we, we haven't really exchanged anything yet. So it's still, we're still in the very be beginning stages of the document preparation. Are there okay. any questions for Rich? Thank you. Okay, That's good. Thank really you. helpful. I appreciate uh, it. Thanks and, for watching. You know, and I, I know that this is yeah, ultimately you get asked to do a lot, <laughs> and, 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 and you need to have involvement in it on the front end. I'm, I know we've asked, we've asked Larry and everybody to make sure Monica is kept informed and invi invited to come to a lot of the planning meetings uh, that they're having. To, and hopefully, she can come to some of those and keep you know keep current on the whole thing. But um, you know, this the, you have you know you have our commitment. Mayor's commitment, my commitment to to keep you informed on the process, and you know if, if I need to come back next month or whatever to give you an update, I will. Uh, but but you you know we're we're going to work with you on this to make sure it's done in a way that you feel comfortable going forward. Great, thanks, Rich. I know um, we're pleased to have Mary with us as well. I'm not sure if Mary Cavara has anything she'd like to add to the. So she's sitting on the back row. Uh, no, thank you for being here, and uh, it's really helpful to kind of keep us uh, apprised of, of how we're walking through this. So um, thank you both for being here. Uh, next up, I guess we're going to move on into the Nissan Stadium um, report. Janine Kaufman and Steve Underwood. Uh, Madam Chair, person, how are you this morning, members? Well, thank you. Um, let me uh, welcome you first to our building. Uh, this is our home, Nissan Stadium. We're uh, so glad to have you here. The building means so much to us. Uh, but I would like to make one sort of um, uh, personal remark, which is 
we don't say often enough how much we appreciate your community service. Uh, we realize that none of you are being compensated for being here. So we're grateful for the contribution that you make, and uh, maybe we should say that more often uh, so that you understand that's how we, how we feel about your service. Uh, I was uh, very uh, interested in Rich's remarks about the new MLS stadium. As you know, we've been involved in both of the MLS uh, franchises committees uh, and did everything that we could to help them uh, get here. And we're very pleased to do that. We think the building will add a lot to our community. Uh, we think having a major league soccer franchise here in town will mean the world to Nashville. We have proven beyond any doubt uh, as recently as this past year that Nashville is all over uh, soccer. Uh, we had over 100,000 people uh, pay to get in to see two soccer matches here uh, in the same month or within a month of each other in any event. So uh, we're very glad to have them here and welcome uh, their new building. Uh, a lot's been going on in our business, by the way, uh, over the last few months. As you know, we had our first uh, playoff win on the road against a uh, highly esteemed opponent uh, just a couple of months ago, and uh, that meant a lot to us and to our organization. We also have welcomed a new head coach and a new, entirely new coaching staff. Uh, we've signed, as you've seen, uh, pretty aggressively in free agency. Uh, three players just in the last uh, few days. And in a, a less than a month, we will reveal our new uniforms, uh, which we're very excited uh, to share with Nashville. That'll happen downtown the evening of April 4th. So uh, we're also uh, still in the running to host the NFL draft here next year. We're very excited about the possibility of doing that and think that Nashville has more to offer than any of the other competing cities. So um, before I uh, take too much of his time, uh, let me uh, have the privilege of introducing the voice of the Titans, Mike Keith, a colleague of mine for over 20 years. We're so glad that he's part of our organization. He means so much to us. Mike. Thank you, Steve. It's a pleasure to be with you this morning. And uh, I get to talk about all the fun stuff. Uh, this is day 74 of 2018, but it's actually the first full day of the league year. It actually started yesterday. So all the free agent signings, all the trades, things of that sort, uh, that all is underway now and we're reading about that. Uh, there are reports that we have agreed to terms with two of the Patriots' best players, uh, but we're rule followers, so I can't confirm that here. Uh, but uh, stay tuned, just say that. Uh, but the thing, the thing about the first 74 days that's been so exciting is all of our movement. But let me go back to the last day of 2017 for what was one of the greatest days in the history of Nashville sports. Uh, we had a chance to bring the Jacksonville Jaguars here for the season finale with, for the first time ever, a chance to play a game at Nissan Stadium that if we won, we went to the playoffs. And this community's response to that was unreal. If you'll remember, the weather was not fantastic. It was actually awful. It was freezing. And our fans came out, and they willed us to win this game. They were not going to let us lose. We beat Jacksonville 15 to 10. It's one of my favorite wins in the time that we've been here for what it meant to get in the playoffs for the first time in nine years and what it meant to see our fans have this moment once again. Uh, one of the great performances, too, by our young quarterback, Marcus Mariota. As Steve alluded to, uh, we went in the playoffs the next weekend to Kansas City, fell behind 21-3, to and came back and won that game for our first playoff victory in 14 years. So another step in the right direction for us. Uh, young Mr. Mariota pulled a first. He completed a touchdown pass to himself. <laughs> That has never been done in NFL playoff history, and that was certainly an exciting moment for us. Uh, the next week, we had a chance to go to New England. That didn't turn out so great, so I'm going to skip over that. Um, I do want to talk about the Pro Bowl, though. Six of our Titans went to the Pro Bowl and had a great time in Orlando. One actually had the best time of all, Delaney Walker, our talented tight end, who's back for his sixth season with the Titans this year. He was named the most valuable player of the Pro Bowl. Uh, as Steve also mentioned, we made a change in our head coach. 
and it was about our direction and taking us from being a good team, a ball club that has had back-to-back -back winning seasons, and making us into an elite team. And through a process that was actually uh, pretty streamlined, but awfully well done, uh, we selected Mike Vrabel and picked what we think is going to be one of the great young coaches in our sport to come. Uh, you may remember Coach Vrabel's playing career. He was an all-pro linebacker, won three Super Bowl rings with the New England Patriots, has been an up-and-comer in the coaching ranks at Ohio State and with the Houston Texans. And we're very excited about his direction for what we do, in large part his staff. Uh, this staff is one of the best I think that I've ever had the opportunity to see. This is my 21st year with the ball club. And I think it starts on defense with Dean Pease, who was the defensive coordinator in Baltimore for years, who Mike talked out of retiring to come run our defense. And then Matt LaFleur, who we interviewed for our head coaching job. He was the Los Angeles Rams offensive coordinator. He's now our offensive coordinator. So I think we're going to take the good that we've had and make it into something even better. Uh, looking for players has been our task. We spent time at the Combine like every other team. I was thrilled in dealing with members of the national media how much interest there is in our franchise and in our city. Uh, they think we've got something going on and there are going to be a lot of good things to come from the Titans over the next few years. Uh, that's obviously good for everybody. Mentioned the start of free agency and pending news out there about free agents to come, but we also got some great news too when we re-signed two of our best players, our starting right guard, Josh Klein, and one of our defensive linemen, Daquan Jones, who had an outstanding season a year ago. So 74 days, uh, rocking and rolling, lots going on. We have not stopped. And what's most exciting about this for us is it's not going to stop. Uh, this is an incredibly special year for the Tennessee Titans and for this community. And here to tell you more about it and what a great year it's going to be for our season ticket members and our fans is our Senior Vice President and Chief Revenue Officer, Stuart Spears. Thank you, Mike. Uh, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for having us here today. We appreciate the opportunity to share a little uh, vision and insight to what we're working on and what we're progressing towards as an organization. Uh, I believe it was about this time last year I was in front of you before and shared with you some of our uh, thoughts and objectives for what we were working on in the off season, and we're in that exact same spot again this year. Uh, our season ticket member base is the core and the foundation for everything we're able to accomplish, and so we spend a great deal of time and effort during the off season on engaging them, making them feel a part of the organization, making them feel valued, encouraging them to remain as a part of uh, our team, and then flowing into the season, making sure we de deliver on everything that we have promised them. Um, we start out this off season with an event at Opryland Hotel, uh, where we introduce our new head coach to the organization or to the fans. We had over 8,000 season ticket members at the event. Uh, had a lot of fun, gave away a lot of prizes. Eddie George was our host in conjunction with Mike Keith. So it was just a fun, fantastic evening to not only introduce our head coach to our fans in our city, but also to uh, have the city and the fans introduce themselves to Coach Vrabel. He was blown away by the event, by the energy in the room and the excitement and the turnout, and it was a great opportunity for him to learn what a special market this is. Uh, as Steve mentioned, uh, the next main event that we have coming up on the agenda is a very exciting one. Uh, it's been in the works for about a year and a half. It'll be our first kind of retooling of our uniform since the Titan brand was launched in 1999. We're very excited for uh, what that look is going to mean and how it's going to be received by the fans. And so we put together a large event that we're going to have down on Broadway downtown with Nissan Stadium as a backdrop. and and open to the public for free. Our friends at Florida Georgia Line have agreed to come out and they're gonna play a free concert for everybody. So it's gonna be a fantastic evening, one of which we uh, hope each of you will be able to attend and as many fans and ticket holders that we have in Nashville. Uh, 
this is our 20th season as the Titans. As I mentioned, this is our first rebranding of the uniform, but we're also going to have many other exciting activities during the year, commemorating 20 seasons, playing at Nissan Stadium and playing under the Titan brand. The logo you see on the screen is developed to commemorate this season. You will see it in marketing materials around uh, the team. We're going to have a decal to wear on the helmet and uh, and have it in and around the stadium as a kind of a, a reminder and a moniker of celebrating not only the 20 seasons that we've put in so far, but also the exciting things that lie ahead. Uh, late April is always a, a fun time for our organization. It's the chance to bring new players uh, into the fold. Uh, it's also an exciting time for our fans. It's a, a chance to kick off the year and, and, and speculate amongst themselves on what's going to happen with our roster, what players that they've watched in college are going to go where. And so we always have a fun um, event at the stadium, I give free and open to the public. Uh, the Thursday night of the first round of the draft, we'll have Nissan Stadium open with interactive games for fans, uh, have some alumni players and current players there signing autographs. Mike Keith and his radio team will be broadcasting live from the club level. It's just always such an exciting night. We're picking a little later than we have in, in recent years, and that's a good thing. Uh, the better you are, the later you pick, and so it'll be late in the evening before we make our first selection, but there will be a lot of excitement building to that point. During this offseason, we like to take as many opportunities as we can to reward and thank our season ticket members. Uh, we try to come up with the unique experiential prizes and opportunities that they can have to show them that there's value in continuing to commit to being a season ticket member, to having those tickets for every game. Uh, you'll see on the screen here some of the items that we uh, gave away at the uh, event where we introduced Coach Vrabel in February. We had uh, the Family in the upper left uh, won a trip to uh, England to see us play the Chargers uh, this fall. In the bottom left there, a gentleman won a trip to the uh, NFL draft where he's going to uh, fly to Dallas and experience all the excitement firsthand. And we had uh, some of our players present, Taylor Dewan uh, giving an autographed jersey to a, a, a young fan, and Kevin Byer doing the, doing the same as well. So it was a, it was a fun night. And we just further evidence of us trying to find ways to, to touch and engage with each of our, our fans and season ticket members. Um, upcoming in May is a, is a, a very unique and uh, fun off-season event that we do. Uh, we pick a Saturday night in May and, and open the Nissan Stadium to our season ticket members to bring their families out to watch a movie on the, the big Jumbotron. Uh, so we're going to be doing that again th this May, and, and it's it's – it's an opportunity for uh, season ticket members to maybe bring their kids, whether from the neighborhood or from their own family that w might not necessarily come to a game, but to come experience the excitement of being in the stadium and develop some memories regarding the Titans. As I mentioned, we're, uh, we're going to London this fall, so that's going to be very, very exciting. Uh, in late October, we'll be scheduled to play the San Diego Chargers over there. Uh, it's a great showcase for Nashville internationally. To, uh, for us to carry our brand over there. It ties in perfectly with British Airways launching their first year of nonstop service from uh, Nashville to London. So we've had discussions with them for ways to cross promote uh, their nonstop service to make sure they're as successful as they can and for them to be able to help shepherd Titan fans that want to cross the Atlantic Ocean to see us play. As Steve mentioned again, one of the more exciting things that we have on the horizon is the potential to host the NFL draft here in Nashville. Uh, the mayor's office and the CVC have been working closely with the sports council and we've provided as much support and in input as we can to help make the prospect realistic for hosting an NFL draft here and we are one of five finalists. There's a potential we could host the draft as early as next year or in, in 2020. As you know, the NFL draft is has grown into quite a spectacle. It's a multi-day event carried across mul multiple national platforms for broadcast, and, and we feel that the city of Nashville is the, we're biased, of course, but is the best prospect of the finalists to host it. So we're excited about that potentially happening and know that the city of Nashville and uh, its business leaders and our organization will pitch in to make that event as successful as it can be. Uh, What's the timeline? When do we anticipate? We should expect to hear some type of decision as early as May of this year. And then, obviously, if it's, re 
if it's awarded for 2019, that'll be a, a quick uh, time frame to term. But um, the, the sports council is on hand, the CVC is on hand, the mayor's office is on hand. Everyone's prepared to, to pull it off if we are given that opportunity. Any other questions? Um, last thing I want to talk about was our season ticket renewals. Uh, as is the, the norm, we sent out renewals around February 1st. We're continuing with these activities during the springtime process to keep the season ticket members engaged and to keep them interested and focused on uh, what it means to be a season ticket member so that they uh, maintain that relationship with us. Renewals are off to a good start. Uh, we feel good about where we are. We're, we're on track. We had a very high uh, renewal rate last year um, of almost 98 percent. And so I, we're on target to end up in that neighborhood again. That gives us a solid foundation upon which we can build with new sales to make sure that the stadium stays full as it was last year. All right. If there are not any questions, I'll turn it over to Bob Flynn. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, board members. It's always a pleasure to sit there or stand up here and chat with you all. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to give you the same update I usually do about what we're doing here at the stadium, if I can figure out how this thing works. Bob, do you want me to play? Yeah, well, what's wrong? You, think a, you would think a stadium guy could figure this thing out, but maybe not. So, first of all, I'm going to go over what's, what's happening in the – is it not working for you either? No, it's not working. Okay, well, see if we can get caught up. There we go. So, I'm going to just tell you about the – you know, we've got a busy – this is going to be the busiest – season or year that the stadium's ever had. Um, so in a week from now, Anthony, if you can go to the next one. Or, so a week from this Saturday, we'll, we'll host the first home game ever for the Nashville Soccer Club. We're excited about that. I think we're going to have a real good turnout. They had a great turnout at First Tennessee Park. And for this game, they're going to have it here because the demand was, was so large that they wanted to, you know, get as many people as they could come see them. So we're excited about having that. And then after that, we'll have uh, the Country Music Marathon comes through here. As you all know, that's uh, I think it's 35,000 people that will pretty much go through our parking lots and and use our, our you know use the Sports Authority's uh, parking lots and and all the areas around here. So it's a it's a you know it's a fun weekend there. Then after that, we'll have our good uh, five. Which one of them? We'll have the Good Guys Car Show, which in years past has been uh, a three-day show. This year's gonna be a two-day show, so it's gonna be a Friday and Saturday before. Mother's Day weekend, um, you know, I think in the, it, that's about, about 50,000 people will come through and check out, you know, all these cars. It's a, it's a, it's a fun show if you've never been to it, if you, if you like old cars, uh, which I do. Then, uh, then we have the Titans 5K on the Saturday, which is uh, something that's huge uh, for us, for our season ticket members. I think we do about 2,500 runners, maybe 3,000. Uh, so it's growing every year, and, you know, the coaching staff gets here, the players are here. Um, so it's a... You know, and we've been lucky with weather in the past, so hopefully it'll be another good day, but it's a fun one. Uh, then we get into the CMAs. CMAs, as you all know, it's four, four ex great nights here at the, at the stadium. Uh, you know, they're 45,000 each night, and it's a, it's a lot of work, but, uh, you know, it's, it's a great event for us to host here. It's a great event for the city here, so we're excited about having that. And then two weeks later, always one of my favorites, Monster Jam. I invite all of y'all to come out and see that just because it's, it's, really, it's, it's really a family show. It is amazing to see how many uh, neighbors, I would say one dad or one parent will bring 12 different kids to, to, to the event. It's just it's a fun, fun event. So that, that's the 23rd. And then, um, then August is going to be something special for us. Um, we have Kenny Chesney on the 11th, uh, and then uh, next one. Then we'll have probably a football game in there between then. Then we're going to have a Taylor Swift concert. We'll probably have another football game. We're going to have a TSU game. Um, we're going to be busy in the month of August. Um, every weekend we will be uh, hosting something here. Um, so we're excited about that. Then we have the Ed Sheeran concert on October 6th, which is another big concert. Um, what we don't have listed up there is all the 10 NFL games, the two TSU games, uh, the Music City Bowl game. So, uh, and there could be a couple other things that we're still working on for this year. So in my estimates, I think we'll do 24 stadium events, which I don't think we've ever done that before. So I'm real excited about that. I mean, it's, it's, good, it's good for, I mean, that's why you all want the stadium to be used 
it's good for uh, all of us. So I'm excited about it. It's, it's going to be a lot of work in, in, in August, but it'll be a fun, it'll be a fun month. Um, next, okay, stadium, you know, right now the west side, all the suites are being renovated. On the east side, there's five or six, but when this renovation's all done, every suite in this, in this building will have been renovated. Uh, the security uh, video surveillance system, which you all voted on, I'm going to say two or three uh, meetings ago, that is going on. Everything's working great. Um, you know, we've, we've got, I don't know if it's a third or half of the cameras already up and working, and it's, uh, it's, it's night and day. You can actually see so much more, and we can record a whole lot more. So um, we're excited about that. If you all want to go check out some of the cameras after this, we'd be more than happy to walk you all over there. Um, so we're excited about that. But it's, that's going to be huge. That's going to be, you know, replacing... 19 year old equipment with brand new equipment is going to be a really good thing for all of us and even for all the parking lots for safety and all that stuff so um, we're excited about that i think that's about all i have unless you all have any questions about events coming up or anything any questions it's great to hear that uh, this is the busiest season that this stadium has ever had that yeah, it'll be the busiest season we know you're uh, working hard and we appreciate that we're working on 19 also, so uh, 19 should be a good one. probably squeeze in maybe a few more events, probably, right? <laughs> <laughs> We're trying. I'm telling you that right now. So thank you, everybody, for your time. Thank Great. you. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Janine Kaufman, and I am Chief Financial Officer with the Titans. And I get the boring stuff at the back, all the numbers, right? Um, so welcome everybody glad to see you guys today we're going to walk through a couple of um, financial overview we'll start with the ticket tax um, the ticket tax as a reminder is actually kept by metro and um, it's on metro's books but we like to present this information just so you guys know what's in the funds as a reminder the ticket tax is a three dollars um, that's imposed on every bowl event um, inside the stadium um, with the exception of um, like a TSU event um, so all um, all bowl events that Bob mentioned all of the concerts coming up that is all revenue that will be generated and added to this ticket tax fund at three dollars per per ticket sold the ticket tax is divided into two different funds the two dollar fund and the one dollar fund the $2 fund, um, as you can see here, has a little more than a million dollars in it. And that was used when we did the upgrades on the stadium back in 2012 to finance bonds. And just kind of as a reminder, the things that we did then in 2012 was we put in the new video boards, we put in the LED ribbons, the six elevators, express elevators that on each side that go all the way up to the third floor, put in some fan zones, new control room, and a distributed sound system that were all, all part of the bonds. And um, the ticket tax is flowing in and they're able to pay the bonds without any problem and there again you can kind of see the debt service numbers there um, they've been able to pay off um, about 10 million dollars in debt service to date um, the next fund oh I lost lost it um, the next fund is the dollar fund and um, we're not sure what's going on hold on one second we're in power saving mode I'll pause for a second am I good Are you good? Y'all can see? You guys have it? Okay, cool. All right, so the next fund is the dollar fund. And um, and so again, that's you've got the $2 fund and the dollar fund. And these were this dollar fund was used to issue bonds that went into the seat replacement that we did in 2015, as well as all of the concrete repair work that um, Larry Adama and his team oversaw. Um, for re concrete repair work and some of those other um, kind of water sealing areas that were done. Um, again, this fund has about $1.2 million in it um, and so has been, been doing really well as, as well. Um, this is the user fee, um, excuse me, let me go back one. Ticket tax total paid to date. So total that has been put in the um, paid for the ticket tax to date is about $20 million. 
So that is $20 million that has been raised through visitors who have come to Nissan Stadium and paid this tax. So that's a lot of money. And as Bob mentioned, with 24 events coming up this year, we look to see that continue just to add and grow. We've been averaging since um, physical year 2015, roughly about $3 million coming into the user fund a year. So, so a good number there. Um, the user fee recap, um, and this is for 2017, just for Titans games, we put in about $1.8 million into the user fee fund for 2017. And that will go through an audit. Um, we have our auditors who are coming out in April. They'll audit the user fee fund through the agreed upon procedures, and then we'll present that um, in May to the board like we've done in the past. Um, I put in here 18 because the way the user fee gets paid in for the Titans games is we pay that in installments. We pay it in 10 installments of $162,000. And that payment, the first payment went in um, in January 31st. Um, and so what we do is as then the games are played, we actually true up that amount that's been paid in for the actual sold tickets, tickets distributed, sold and comp tickets. And so as each game is played and we prepare our official NFL box office statement, then we true up the amount that gets paid into the user fee. And for 17, you can kind of see how that breakdown worked. All right, moving right along. Do I have any questions on user fee before I move to capital fund? So just to be clear, the user fee is charged to all events except Tennessee State? So the, um, there is actually specific language in the law, and I believe um, TSU is exempt, and I can't remember if there is, Steve, do you remember what else is exempt? Any, any ticketed event in the bowl other than TSU games or assigned TSU games um, are excluded from the tax. Everything else is included. Yes. Anything? In the bowl. <laughs> yeah, in the bowl. Yeah, so if it's a parking lot event, it doesn't, you know, have a tax or somebody's in the club for a wedding reception. Obviously, that's not like ticketed. Anything else? Okay, I'll move to capital fund. So the capital fund currently has about $1.3 million in it. And this gets funded every year um, through a million dollar contribution that Metro makes into the fund. You can see here on the next, since inception, um, kind of all of the ins and the outs of this fund. And we have actually prepared a reimbursement request um, that we do once a year. We submitted that reimbursement request um, to Monica and have been working with Monica and Bob Lackey and Margaret Darby. Um, they have been reviewing the request, asked some questions. We've kind of gone back and forth on that. And so I think we're at a comfortable place on the request and that should go before the um, finance committee at the April meeting. And that request is roughly about $1.2 million. All right. Um, and this is just kind of a summary of our unfiled re receivable, excluding the Wi-Fi. Um, and there hasn't been much really change on this report since um, we last met. Um, as, and just to kind of go through the real detail, which is the handout I think everybody has, which is the CapEx communication tool, which is, um, should be in your binder as well. And so I highlighted in green on the CapEx communication tool the three projects that we'll be seeking reimbursement for at the next meeting, um, just kind of for your reference as well. And this, this is really a great document. It details out all the projects that we have that are out there, gives you a recap of the completed projects, the current projects, and then some anticipated projects. This gets updated on a monthly basis or as needed basis as projects come up. This document has not really changed since we last presented, other than the video surveillance system that Bob talked about. That's been our big project that's been ongoing here um, at the stadium during January, February, and March. And we are somewhat limited on our time frame on when we can do upgrades and changes to the stadium, because as you can see, our calendar is pretty packed. So you have to kind of work in some things when you can. 
So that has really taken up the bulk of our off season, that project. Um, do I have any questions on any of that? Or any questions for any of us? Yes, Dudley. Um, the Wi-Fi project, could you just uh, elaborate a little bit on that? Uh, tell so us we, what it entails, when you anticipate it being completed. The Wi-Fi project is complete. It was actually installed several years ago, and it basically provided Wi-Fi to the building. So that if you're, you know, you're sitting here now, you can look down and you can actually get Wi-Fi. Prior to that project, Dudley, there was no Wi-Fi in the building. And as you know, it's standard. I mean, having Wi-Fi in a building is, I mean, it's standard at this point. Um, and so that's really what that project is, is it was Wi-Fi system for Nissan Stadium. Well, I was just asking because it's listed under current projects on your CapEx. Um, I think it's actually listed as kind of like a little separate line item. I'm sorry if that's confusing. confusing. So we, we separate it out into total current, total completed, and then put the total Wi-Fi project just listed there separately, which is uh, 3.1 million. Yep. And so um, just because it was such a large project, if you'd rather me put it on the completed list going forward, I can totally do that just so there's no confusion. No, no I, problem. Just, I was just asking if the only, the only reference to it is in the current uh, section. So. Yeah, I can totally do that. I've sent, um, Monica has all the detail and all the invoices for the Wi-Fi project as well as Metro. Okay, well, with that, we have a video um, just to kind of wrap up. As we talked about, this is our 20th year as a Titan, and um, and so we kind of have a cool little 20-year video. One, two, three, three. <laughs> McNair takes a straight drop. He's now flush to his right. He fires their Dyson at the five. Dyson goes into the end zone, untouched. Gives it to George, running right up the middle. Five, and he dies! Touchdown! Tight! Give it to Henry, running to the left. He turns the corner, he's got the first down. Henry down the sidelines. Ten, five, end zone! Touchdown! Tight! As Peterson drops the throw, Peterson in trouble. Peterson sacked! Takes the snap, feeling the heat. Sacks! You, sir, have just been a rat code. Under some pressure, fires down the middle, intercepted Bullock. Ball tipped up in the air, Bullock's got it. Firing deep down the middle, Bullock intercepts it. Bullock with three interceptions. He is Mr. Monday Night. Fires down the middle, pass too high, and intercepted. It's fired. Firing downfield, pass intercepted. It's fired again. Fires deep downfield, fired with another interception. Three interceptions on the day from Kevin Byard. Nedney again. Can he do it? Snap, set, kick. Yes! Good! Standing on the arrowhead at arrowhead. Snap, set, kick on the way. Going to be fielded by Lorenzo Neal at the 25. He pitches it back to Wycheck. He throws it across the field to Dyson. He's got something. 30, He's 40. got something. Is goes. Touchdown, Titans. There are no flags on the field. It's a miracle. Tennessee has pulled a miracle. Throwing into the end zone. No, he kept it. No for the end zone himself. And got in. It was batted back to him. He did throw it. What a play, Marcus who just threw and caught a touchdown pass. Gives Chris Johnson big room to the 10, to the 20, 30, end zone, 94 yards! Mariota drops, steps up, he can run a long way. 15, 20, 25, 30, 15, 10, 5, end zone, 87 yards! Firing into the back of the end zone.
So thank you all so much for being here and for listening to us today. And with that, I'll turn it back over to Kim. Thank you. Thanks, Janine. Okay. At this time, yes, I think we're back to Monica yes, to uh, the executive director's report. Yes. Um, <laughs> thank you for your patience for a little scheduling change. Um, last night, we had a very special opportunity to honor and celebrate um, the life and legendary career of, of our own Coach Temple. Um, I think all of you know that he was a founding member of the Sports Authority. And TSU hosted a reception, a screening. They had a, um, a panel discussion um, around the new documentary, Mr. Temple and the Tiger Bells. And it really was a, a great night. Thank you. Um, our chair was there. Margaret Bim was there. And um, it really was very special to see the work that's gone in to this. And I think that Coach Temple would have loved every single minute of it. Um, if you have the opportunity to see it, please go um, see it. Bo Roberts, Howard Gentry, and that whole documentary team really did um, a fantastic job. Um, next, I do want to spend some time looking at our budget because it is it's budget season. We have a new budget analyst who is here with us this morning. So Yomi, if he would stand, he. Um, he will be working with, with us. Brandon Hess has been our budget analyst for several years, and I think most of you, hopefully all of you, have had an opportunity to meet him through the years. But we are um, looking forward to working with, with Yomi, and um, we have a lot to talk about. So this, this is purely an update. Um, we are not requesting action from the board, but um, behind tab three in your packets, you will find Metro's FY19 budget calendar. Um, I think most of you know that the Sports Authority's meeting with Mayor Briley has been scheduled for 2 p.m. next Wednesday. It will be in the Mayor's media room in the courthouse. I know some of you have already let me know that you will be able to attend, and so we, we always appreciate that support. Um, also in your packet behind tab three, you'll find our operating budget presentation. The first couple of pages address the current year budget. Um, our current year budget is 859.1. Um, we've had multiple conversations with Metro Finance over the last several weeks looking at um, budget projections, and we do expect to finish this fiscal year well below budget. Um, the second page, you'll find the most recent bar report. That's the budget accountability report with year-to-date actuals. Um, if you have, do you have any questions about the current budget? Monica, next week, it says 2 o'clock. I thought it was 2.15. Did it change? It's 2 to 2.15. We, we will send out, we can send out another reminder. Um, so looking at the FY19 budget, back um, for FY8, FY17 and FY18, the administration looked for ways to provide department improvements, budget improvements to all of the metro departments. Um, but this year, we're focused on maintaining a solid financial foundation. So as a result, the departments haven't been asked to prepare budget modifications um, and budget requests like they have in the past, but we're working with the budget office um, just to identify any mandatory budgetary requirements. So let's say we're opening a new building or if there are specific um, regulatory requirements that would necessitate a budget increase, then the finance department will consider those on a case-by-case -case or department basis. Um, departmental programs and services, finance has told us they will not be expanding those this year, but they're looking to see how can departments use their existing resources more effectively. So having said all of that, our projected FY19 budget is flat. It will continue at 859.1. Um, it is likely that the finance department We'll need to update our insurance cost, and, and so that might raise the budget. But they will look at those and then um, inform us um, probably the end of April. Any questions about our operating budget? What is um, the all other expense category? 
if you look um, the the last page, I believe it's the last page. Mm -hmm. it's on the back of it. Do you see it? It's on the back of the page. Oh, it's on the subject. That's page five. Six. Yeah, six. six. Then you can see the breakout of all other expenses. Um, looking at the FY19 Metro Capital Improvements Budget, um, we have made entries for the soccer stadium, which is $225 million, and then there's another $25 million for stadium infrastructure um, that you all are aware of. And then we're also having some conversations in terms of um, arena capital that might need to be plugged in there as well. So we'll continue to, um, to talk with the predators and, and and look at how we um, best submit those. Any questions about capital? So again, this is this is informational. Um, I'm sorry, Emmett. I, I just had a brief question um, under the uh, soccer facility. Like you said, 245 million. What is the, the average capacity of the you know, soccer stadiums in other cities? What's the average cost Capacity, for stadium? Oh, people. Oh, okay, so so this one is being built at twenty seven five is the capacity. Is it what is the range? It's a pretty broad range. That some of the smaller stadiums I think are under twenty thousand, maybe eighteen or nineteen that were built twenty years ago, to some of the teams that are playing in NFL stadiums that may have sixty or seventy thousand seats. Okay, pretty broad. Um, so that, that concludes my update for the budget, if there aren't any other questions. Um, the other item of note that I wanted to mention, and we've been talking about this periodically um, for the last year, is the RFP for parking management of the Sports Authority controlled lots at Nissan Stadium. And so we have submitted a scope of work to Metro Procurement. Um, they have that information we hope to receive next steps from them soon um, and so we'll continue to work on the final pieces that we need to get that out and on the street and then we'll continue to provide updates to the board okay. that, uh, any questions All right. that concludes my report thank you monica Next up on our agenda is consideration of the 2018 Rock and Roll Marathon License Agreement. I think you're also going to take us through that. So, um, so as you know, and, and as the Titans mentioned, on April the 28th and 29th, the Rock and Roll Marathon, which was formerly the Country Music Marathon, and the Kids Rock Race will be um, here in Nashville. Um, the parking lots at Nissan Stadium will be used on race days. And also in the days leading up to the race, there's a, there's a health expo, um, there's volunteer and overflow parking needs. And so you have a list, um, I think, in front of you of how the lots will be used. Each year, competitor group rents the parking lots from the Sports Authority um, at a cost of $10,000. You do have a license agreement in front of you. Um, Keith and Karen from Com Predator group are here, and Kim. and Kim, I didn't meet Kim. Um, thank you for being here. And so they're also available to answer any questions. Um, last year, you approved a very similar license agreement for a couple of changes that were made since the document was emailed to you on Friday, um, and you can you can look at that. But if you have any specific questions about the race, then we do have um, competitor group here to answer that. Um, or if you have any specific questions about the license agreement, then we can answer those too. So, Margaret, this is pretty much the same uh, agreement that we passed for the previous years? It is. It is very, um, is very similar, yes. So I will move approval. A second for approval of the 2018 uh, Rock and Roll Marathon License Agreement. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Ayes have it, and the agreement is approved. And that takes us to our project manager report. Uh, I believe at this time we have Ed Henley and Roxanne Bethune, who will give us our update from our project management team. Good morning, board. Good morning, everyone here. 
Um, I, I want to talk a little bit about um, our project at uh, Nissan Stadium, fitting that we're here. Um, I want to give a big thank you for allowing us to be a part of the project and expressing the confidence to allow our team to manage that for you. Also want to thank the Titans who were fantastic to work with, as well as the other project team members that were a part of that um, project. Um, the Titans did a wonderful job getting us excited about what's to come for the facility and for the organization. And what I want to do uh, this morning is just kind of take a little bit of a, a review of what we did here at the facility. Um, it's been a little bit of a while since I presented to you all, so I wanted to start off by doing a recap of what ended up being three phases of the project. Um, also want to talk about the um, project's budget update as we kind of finalized everything now. And then um, Ms. Bethune, who is here with me, will give a project DBE update, kind of showing where we shook out at the end of the project. So I'm sure you'll be excited where we are, but I won't steal too much of that thunder. So just to, um, like I said, recap the scope of work, we initially started the project thinking that we would do really two big chunks of work. Um, replacement of the seats for the stadium, um, 60,000 plus seats, as well as a lot of um, improvements and repairs to the expansion joints and any type of water intrusion um, problems that we were having. Um, ultimately, we ended up going through three different phases because we were able to continually have some funds left as we finished the previous phase. Um, the second phase that we decided to address was the, um, the club level, um, the sealants and caulking. So again, some of those water intrusion issues, um, but just in an area that was a newer scope than what we had originally uh, focused on. As well as um, some guardrail extensions and some additional expansion joints that ran throughout the facility um, that were engaging the public. So making sure that those were a lot safer, um, and of course the guardrail extensions as we address some of those concrete issues. And then phase three, again, we had some additional funds left after we, were complete, after we completed phase two, which was a wonderful position to be in. And so again, some more extensive um, joint repairs um, to extend the life of some of those materials that were in place. Um, and this was done um, all at the West Club level. So we kind of worked our way around the facility addressing what seemed to be the most severe um, issues at the time. Our schedule um, for, the, for those projects um, spanned from October 2015 um, through October 2017 for procurement, um, engineering and design, as well as construction. Um, and this period kind of coincided a little bit with some of the Titans' great play. I don't know if that was a coincidence or not, but ever since we got involved, <laughs> Titans have just been doing wonderful. So uh, hopefully that continues on as we finish up this great work here at the facility. Um, one thing I will say, um, you know, I talk about the time period where we were actually engaged in here at the facility, um, but a couple of months extended past October as we continued to complete the project closeout, we got all the warranties and lien waivers from the vendors that we had on site, and we were able to close out the accounting and reconcile all of those funds. Um, the total budget for the project was $15 million. Um, if you turn to the next page with me, I'll kind of walk through how we spent those funds um, and ultimately where we, where we ended. Um, the first um, section in uses, so I'll kind of walk through this chart, um, talks about the, the three phases that I, I talked about previously. And you'll see where we spent $13.68 million um, direct costs in facility work um, as we made our way through those two years. Um, next, you'll see um, the Sports Authority invoice commitment. So prior to our team being engaged, um, there was some work done um, by the Titans and they had engaged our design team that was part of the project to assess some of those issues and do some minor repairs that were needed at the time. Those um, reimbursements were covered as part of this budget. Um, SKA was the design team. So you see in the design and engineering um, section, as we kept going through each phase, of course, they spent additional funds for that. So we tracked that throughout the, bu throughout the budget as individual phases. And finally, project management and related expenses. Um, that covered our team, our project management team. Also covered the sports authorities portion of the Nissan Stadium facility assessment. So that was um, for the Nissan Stadium's portion of the facility assessment. So that was covered in this budget as well. Also, um, material testing and inspections. Um, an interesting story about that 
something that's kind of wrapped into the numbers that we don't really see. But we were able to get about two dozen TSU students to come out um, as part of the project and help us do the seat inspection. So 60,000 seats, we sat in, flipped the bags, jerked them around a little bit, make sure that they were installed. Because we, of course, as we were doing this process throughout those two years, there were events taking place. We kind of phased in what seats were, were done and open to the public. And so it was a great opportunity to have some TSU students come out, walk around the facility, see what we were doing, get exposure to some of that get out in the hot sun and check <laughs> and check the seats. Um, our team was out there with them, but we did uh, enjoy that experience quite a bit. Um, and then finally, um, I'm going to, if there are no questions about the budget or any of that, I would like to turn it over to Roxanne so she can discuss our DBE participation. Yes, sir. The only question that I had was about the preventative maintenance program going forward. How, how, how would that work? the preventative maintenance program going forward. Out of the facility assessment, we had a, yeah, so part of that was incorporated into a major report that I was not part of. Um, I don't know if anyone else wants to speak to that, but I was not part of pushing the report's uh, final recommendations through. Well, you know, as age, as the facility continues to age, there's things are gonna come up, so I just. Oh, absolutely. Um, with the facility being 20 plus years old as we, as we go forward, a lot of the things that we did now were things that would have been recommended maintenance along the way did not occur. We had the opportunity to go in and do this now, put the facility in a, in a great place. As we continue to ramp up how many events we want to have here, I think it's going to be extremely important to make sure that those things stay in front of mind for the sports authority. Yes, I'm sorry. I think I recall uh, the expansion joints. Did you run out of money before they were all repaired or all the expansion joints? Correct. So there are a few expansion joints that still are in need of repair. And in need of repair re means their, ex their life expectancy has passed. Um, at the time that we were out there, we addressed what was the most severe. And so we just didn't want to leave the impression that everything was done completely based on ex life expectancy for those. So there are a few that still need to be addressed that we will put at the front of the list in terms of areas where new funds would go. Um, for the facility. It's a really good point and good question. <coughs> Any others? Okay. Ms. Bethune? I don't Thank think you, you need to click the right. Good. good morning. Thank you guys for having us. Um, you all have a copy of the DBE report. I'm going to do a real brief, and if there are any questions, by all means, ask. Um, we're really excited about being able to share with you guys how we were able to accomplish and exceed our uh, diversity goal. We originally stated that it was going to be 20%. If you look at the document in front of you, we actually achieved 37.63. Of that, 27% was small, 4.3 was women, and 6.24 was minority. Uh, I'd also like to echo the sentiment to thank uh, the Titans team. Um, I think uh, in order for us to achieve those and become successful, we need to have it from the top. Uh, Bob Flynn's team was very instrumental in getting us there, and so was our uh, construction manager, which was PBG. Uh, they helped us. They were really committed to the diversity participation, which is why we have currently have exceeded that. So we're excited about that. Were there any questions on any of it? I'm just curious as to how the ethnic makeup reflects our community. Are, are we in line with the community or we're in I'm not talking about small business, I'm talking about strictly the ethnic. The ethnic we're in line with the projects and it basically is determined on a project basis depending on the scopes and the availability. So as it relates to what we've done here for the Titans, uh, we actually got our team uh, to pull a minority contractor uh, out of the area because we needed someone that had that experience that could do the seats and the expansion joints. Where we did embrace our uh, diversity businesses is where we were looking at the labor aspect of it. So we were able to do that. But because of the scope as it relates to what we were doing, um, it kind of limited our reach for the uh, minority participation. So what percentage of these numbers are labor? The result of labor? Um, I can tell you that. Hold on a minute. I think it is, just give me a second, let me flip this one. 5%, um, 5.6%. 5 
of the members of his labor. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Thank you guys, we appreciate it. I uh, think that gets us through the bulk of our agenda at this time we have. I have two yes. questions because I'm slow. Okay, that's fine. Back up. I SKA. Yes. Uh, is that someone that you went and sought out to work with, or they were already working here at the stadium? The second part of that is correct. They were already here at the stadium. They had already been engaged by the Titans. As many of you who are here know, that some of these issues were present prior to us joining. SKA had been reached out to to assess some of those issues. And some of the early, um, I would say, much more cost-effective and smaller dollar fixes they were engaged on. But because of their knowledge and complete knowledge of the facility, because they had been inspecting, we absorbed them into our project and kept going. Um, they were great to work with, but they definitely were here before we were, which allowed us to move at the pace that we did in order to get a lot of these things done. Okay, thank you. I thought I remember that. And then, just so that I'm reading this right, is Commonwealth Development a DBE? Correct. So our team is, our team is made up of three firms. Um, Mr. Adams' firm, Commonwealth Development, is a small business entity. Uh, my firm, Pillars Development, is a minority-owned business entity. Ms. Bethune's firm, uh, Alliance Energy Group, is also a woman-owned and minority business entity. So that's the makeup of our, our project team dollars. Okay. Thank you. Sorry if I'm delayed. No, we, we actually like the question. It's great. It's great. Thank you. Good job. Thank you. Thank you, Ed. Okay, this um, moves us on to facility questions. If the board has any additional questions for our other partners, the Sounds Ballpark team and uh, our friends at Bridgestone Arena. We would, I know our reports always include information and updates from those facilities, so um, hopefully everyone's had an opportunity to review and this time we'll entertain any additional questions. Okay, seeing none, we will wrap up today's agenda. Um, Monica, do we have a finance committee meeting date? We are scheduling the finance committee. It will be the second week in April, probably the 11th or 12th. We're waiting for um, a couple of people to confirm when they can attend. So we'll have, uh, looks like we'll have the finance committee the week before our next board meeting? That's correct. Well, our, we're scheduled to come back and reconvene on April 19th at First Tennessee Park. Um, at 10.30 on Thursday, and if there are uh, no other, there's no other business, so we'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Great. Thank so you. We're, we are adjourned. Thank you. This has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information about this and other programs, visit nashville.org.